I'm ready. This meeting is being recorded. <laughs> it's still on me. We're being recorded. So, yeah, that, that little alert comes up just so you yeah, know, like, hey, so it's just being so recorded. You, know, you can't walk around without your clothes on. You know, like, <laughs> as, as sometimes video game players will do because ain't nobody watching this. Hey, so um, welcome, John. For those of you who do not uh, recognize John, John Salter. He is uh, arguably one of the best video game players in the world. When I say that, uh, John did the incredible feat of going after the length of time video game record, which was 80 plus hours and uh, an in insanity. How far did you go? It was 80 what? Um, I, I ain't gonna put me on the spot. I think it was 80, 86 hours and 16 eight, minutes. It was 84 to 88, something 80, like oh, that. 84, 84 yeah. hours and 16 minutes. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, it was like a crazy amount of time. Uh, different than Joust. Joust, I think if you get, if you, one continuous game and you get past 60 hours you're like in, i don't know what i don't know yeah, well, I, I get that that, so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's one of those things that i continue to think i want i, I want to try to do it again after abusing myself a couple times doing it fracturing a tooth and doing stupid stuff because you have to concentrate more because you can only get 255 extra guys uh, losing one at about every 17 seconds when you go to the bathroom or, or rest so let's let's talk about um well one did you still have your arcade wasn't that full blast arcade yeah uh, no i closed yeah. that down when the coronavirus like oh gosh, when, yeah. when, when the panic hit for covid right around in march of whatever year that a couple of years ago i closed i, I closed uh as soon as the as soon as all the mandates went down and they um you know people started getting panicky all my parties got canceled and all that so i made a deal with the landlord and bought yeah. it out and closed it down. So it was really, really early into the coronavirus. Probably a wise choice because it got, it, it got just worse and worse and worse as the, the Yeah, I didn't think it was going to get bad, but I didn't think it was going to get that bad. So it was, it was definitely yeah. a good move. Yeah. Yeah. Wise move. So we'll get into the questions. I, I sent you those, um, I don't know, half a dozen, dozen questions or so, and we'll work through them and feel free to expand um, as you so wish. Um, my first question is, when did you first play Joust? So I couldn't tell you the exact year, but it was in, when it first came out in the 80s. Cause, so I'm 54 nice. years old. So I was kind of a kid in the, you know, 82, yeah. was that 82, Joust 82? 82, July 16th, you know, so it's actually a, a less than a month away from its 40th anniversary. Yeah, so that's when I was, I want to say I was a freshman in high school or the summer <laughs> before my freshman year. I can't remember exactly there, yeah, but, uh, but um, or yeah. Because freshman year, that's about yeah, that yeah, it was that summer. Um, so I was never a big Joust guy. I Joust is one of those games from when I was a kid that it, all those Williams games, Defender, Joust. I mean, those just have us that look, the explosions, the sounds. They were just like they are still to this day. I feel they stand the test of time. Um, and I thought Joust was really cool, but when I played it, it just didn't really it didn't really resonate or hit. I don't know if I wasn't that wasn't that i don't remember playing and going i i suck at this i'm not going to play it it just yeah. never really did anything for me back then so every once in a blue moon i'd, I'd jump on and play a little bit but that was about it you know and, and you know trying was my game really quick i want to mention the intro there like okay the, i'm kind of known for the armor attack thing for sure yeah. um the 80 84 hours but um yeah. yeah. trying was my game yeah that was my game back in the day so that's in uh and i have the number three score on trying now so you know the, and that's that's my next uh next thing I'm working for is I'm gonna try to take out David's record. So, so you're working on um, Tron stuff. That's a great game. Flynn Lips. Yeah, but '82 that was my first played it, and never really, you know, it never really sucked me in, you know. Yeah. You, well, you know, games you either gravitate to them or you don't gravitate to them. And yeah. Some some games that I didn't like in the in the '70s and '80s, I like better now than I did then. But you know, your mind changes, and the things that attracted me to games were in the physics and the, the, the chess-like moves and I, I still play strategy games because they, they challenge my mind and positioning and stuff so uh, what attracts you to joust now because you weren't attracted to joust then so when i first started getting collecting games and i don't you know i really hesitate to call myself a collector because i don't get the games to say hey look at my collection i bought games to play Right. And I've always been good with electronics and anything computer related. 
circuit board soldering, always been really good with that type of stuff. So it's a great hobby, right? I can buy the broken game and, you know, get that fix of, you know, the electronics and fixing and all that, and then I can play it, right? So I want a Defender. I, even though I'm terrible at Defender, I, it's one of the coolest games ever, right? Sounds, everything, explosions, gameplay. I'm not that good at it, but I want a Defender. Well, you know, the boards are expensive, and I, I found out about the J-Rock. That's like 10 years ago, 11 years ago probably. Right. Maybe even 12. It was a long time ago. So I, I, I bought this J-Rock board. And um, it, of course, it's got Joust, Defender. I didn't care about all those other games. I just wanted a, a Defender. But the cabinet I put it in that I was working on only had the joystick and one button. Oh, wow. Because I had it all ripped apart. But I wanted to play this board that I just spent 200 and some dollars on. Right. So the only game I could play was Joust. Joust. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, you know what? I'm cool. Joust is cool. It's just not my game. And I started playing it. And I'm, and I'm like, you know, I, I mean, I, I really am embarrassed to say this, but I'm like, well, maybe I'll get the level five this time, you know, <laughs> and, and, you know, and the older you get, the better you get at these games, in my opinion, I think just analytically, we're all a little, you know, can, you know, we've, we had the trials and tribulations of life and know how to traverse things that are a little more tougher than we did when we were kids. And so I started playing it and then I wanted to get to the, the, the black knight, of course, right there are the blue guy. Are they black or are they yes. blue? What, what Shadow are they? Lords. Shadow Lords. What's that? Shadow Lords. Shadow Lords. I will say Shadow. So I just want to get to the Shadow Lords. I think 16s where the first one pops out. So I played it and, you know, I got to the first Shadow Lord and then that was cool. And then I kind of didn't play it that much because next thing you know, I, I acquired so many games right. that I decided to open an arcade up. And, but before that, now I'm sure you remember this, but this is not our first interview together. But Richie Knuckles, remember? Right. Uh, Richie, when you went over and rolled the, Joust at Richie's. So I yeah. interviewed you, me, you, and Richie. Me. Yeah, it was, yeah, exactly. And uh, ex yeah, so so the thing about it is, I I I never really watched a lot of YouTube to play games. At least games that I kind of got good at. Um, and when I saw you playing Joust at Richie's, I thought it was the coolest thing in the world that you were killing the shadow, the uh, shadow lords or shadow knights. Shadow lords. Shadow Lords, okay. I thought it was the coolest thing in the world when you were killing the Shadow Lords as they were spawning out of the bottom. Yeah. And they're, yeah. I'm like, I'm like, and I'm watching it. I'm like, this is like just the that the whole flow of the way you're playing it. I'm like, that's the coolest thing ever. And I was like, I have to be, I have to do that. I don't yeah. care how if I never get good at the game. I'm gonna get good enough to where I can go over the top of that and kill them as they come out, right? Yeah. Now, now, in order to get that good, I had to get a lot better at the game. So I just sporadically played it. I was playing in little bits and pieces because at the time I didn't have time to play it, dedicate time because I have a full-time job. I'm oh, fixing yeah. these games, trying to open up the arcade and all that. So, But not to spend too much time on that question, but that's kind of where the love of Joust popped in. Somewhere along the line, it clicked and as I was getting seeing something unique that you, that you didn't see was also – kind of cool you know in the, in the yeah. early 80s we really didn't know how to do that you know occasionally you'd see it spawn up like that but nobody really was like oh, hey let's let's do this and those are things that we just kind of learned over a period of time test and, and trial and the biggest thing that i see that people would do is they, they fly up versus down and i think I told somebody once when I played for 24 hours, it was like 37 million points. Now, if I played 24 hours, it'd be 50 million points. That shows you what little we knew in the early 80s. When, and, and every and every million points that I played then was like, so I think I lost five pounds. So I, you know, it, was, it was crazy because you're, you're playing down and you're trying to survive past a certain level. And you didn't know you could get rid of all these guys. And, and, and that came with just time. And, uh, the, the, the interesting thing now is people can learn to play almost any game to proficiency level just by watching them on YouTube, you know, which we, we, we didn't get to do that. Do you think anybody really let you? Did the best person in the in the yeah. arcade come, come over and say, John, let me show you how to play this game? Yeah. <laughs> no, well, that was they that's, <laughs> Yeah, that's kind of one of the things I'm proud of. I didn't sit there and watch YouTube to get better at Joust. Um, I saw you play. I watched the video. Do you know Mark Keel? Mark. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So Mark. Um, now I haven't talked to Mark in a while. He's talked to him on Facebook a lot, but he's kind of disappeared. But um, I was going through YouTube one day, and uh, and I and I came across a video by Mark Keel, how to get a million points in Joust. I'm like, okay, let's see what Mark's doing. 
he played at the top. Yeah. Like he did a lot of bouncing around at the top, you know? And, um, and I watched the, you know, watch his video and I'm like, Oh, that's, that's unique. I wasn't expecting that, you know, right, right. because everything, because that was the one thing when I first started playing it, when I first kind of got hooked, I was trying to figure out like, you know, everybody don't want, wants to ask you like, what's the trick. And there's really no trick to any of these games. The trick is playing the crap out of it and yeah. learning it, you know, right. but there are, there are a few things that you can tell people to get them along the way. Right. But I was looking for that spot. Like, oh, there's gotta be a spot where I can hang out. That's been the most advantageous. And before even I saw you doing the spawning, you know, the spawn kills and all that, I, I realized like my best bet standing underneath this bottom middle part. Right? <laughs> so I did kind of gravitate to my gameplay, got me down at the bottom. But I mean, I still was a, wasn't that great of a player back then, but I did gravitate to hang out in the bottom. And then the more I, I played it, and like I said, I watched you Richie's and, um, and then, you know, I, we, we've been talking over the years. I mean, it's just like, it was like a five year it was a five year playing it here and there before I really got to the point where I'm, you know, crossed over 2 million, but it wasn't five years of playing it every day. It was, I didn't play it for six months. Right. Then I played it a lot for a while. Then didn't play it. Then played it a lot. Then I got really, that time you came out to the arcade that we played doubles. Right. That's when I really started getting into it shortly before that. I think at that point I might've been a million point player when you came out, maybe right. 1.5. You had good fly. I don't know. I don't remember what your, uh, your score was, but you had good flying skills. So, you know, to get to a million points, you have to have pretty good flying skills. You you can be have really good flying skills and never get to a million points because people don't play. They don't play safe. They don't play strategy. And, and if you're if you want to score, you have to play strategy, not fun. You know, you have a little fun along the way when you have enough men. But if you're going for a score, you you know, it's 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 anal retentive. It's position. Yeah. It's all those things. So. What, let's see, what do you find compelling about Joust? Now, now, what's the most compelling thing? Other, than you, other was, than you, other than, let's say, we didn't, we didn't say this, you and I had a doubles, doubles tournament settings, high score together, which was more. Of I think we, I think that's submitted. I think it's up on. Yeah, we submitted, yeah, we submitted that. I think it's been beaten since. And then you just beat my J-Rock high score. So you have multiple world records, uh, which is really cool. So I, I find you've got better and better and better. And what do you find compelling about it now? Is there anything that you, and I think we'll get to this eventually, which is one of the last questions, so I won't ask you now. So what, 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 what's what I love about it? Yeah. What's compelling about it? What, what gravitates you to it? What makes it worth playing? The 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 game flow like what and and I think this kind of gets to when you get better at the game, the pacing and flow of the game is what I absolutely love about. It. I mean, Joss is my top top three games now of the my of arcade games easily. Um, it's a it's I, it's a game I play the most. I don't play Tron that much because it gets it's boring. Joust is never boring. Joust is like is my video game Tourette's game. <laughs> where I just I can't cannot control my cursing, but. The, the flow of the game, um, when, you, when you get into a rhythm, mm -hmm. and I just like how, how many boards I can clear with, I, like I go for the perfect board. I don't know if you ever think yeah. about that, but I consider the perfect board is where you get exact perfect kills when they're fawning and you clear that board like perfectly. You know, that's my, my goal every game is how many perfect boards can I get? Nice. And just the flow of the game. And then the, the game gets chaotic too when you make a one small tiny, mistake. tiny little mistake sets everything loose doesn't it yeah and it's so and, and, and can kill you yeah and the th and that's what frustrates me the most about the game but realistically that's what makes the game great because yeah. like tron you're running patterns and there are there are you're not you're not completely running patterns there are like techniques and other levels where there aren't patterns like the the grid bugs and that but um it's not the same. There's just something about Joust. I could jump on Joust right now and play it. And I'm not bored. I'm like always, and I'm always trying to improve my game. Like I, I feel like, I feel like suck at the game, even though, <laughs> because you run into so many runs of multiple deaths back to back to back that the game will shut you down and you yeah. cannot have an ego with that game. You it, know, it, it can, it can get really humiliating. I was, I was, <laughs> I, I interviewed Don Hayes last night, and, and, and of course people. People in the know know that that there's that, that we're probably two of the best uh, uh, five man players, and 
we were talking about that and I said, I had just cranked up and started playing some five men to get ready for uh, the event in July in Dallas at free play. I guess it's Arlington at free play, the 40th anniversary that we're taping all this stuff for. And I cranked off on the first man, 800,000 points. I ended up, ready? 840,000 points. Oh. <laughs> so 800,000 on the first man, I got 40,000 points before I was, you know, I was done. So I killed four other guys. I got 10,000 points a piece. It was, it was brutal. It kept tossing me out in a place where I couldn't escape away from them to get set up to kill them. I was like, thank you, Joust. Yeah. So it's, yeah, they, it's I mean, that blows my mind. Yes. Like 800,000 on one man is just blows my mind, you know, because I, I was playing some five man the other day. I'm like, eh, I think I'll stick to this marathon stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you, you know, and, and I love playing marathon. It's just uh, get to going from marathon to five men. The mentality set, set is so different because, you know, you can win two man for every everyone you lose and you're like, okay. You know, if you go 100,000 points for 50,000 or 60,000 points for every man that you you lose, you're, you're way ahead of the curve. You know, five men, it's like, boy, I, I've got an hour to play maybe, you know, or 30 minutes to play, you know, depending on how well you play. So it's just definitely a little different. So, all right, what's your best joust story? I want to hear some good joust stories. Oh, I, got a couple, I got a couple, but my personal favorite joust story involves Lonnie McDonald. Oh my gosh, this is going to be bad. At the Kong Off 2. So the Kong Off 2 was the first time I went for the Armor Tech Marathon. For the, whole, the whole thing's are 100 hours, right? Oh, That's yeah. like what the marathon we're going for is 100 hours. Yeah. And Joel West was the big advocate of that. And nobody's really talking about it. So maybe I got to start up the 100 hours thing again. But So I did the, I did the 100. Before, my goal is that, Before we're too old to do it and die in the process, right? Yeah, I don't know if I could do <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. My wife thought I was going to die when I did it at 42 or whatever and whenever I did yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. But um, – so at the Kong off two, I, I, I got there early and I went for the hundred hours and the, the button broke it like that. Well, the okay. button broke once at 10 hours. I started over, did another 50 some hours and the button broke again. So that was before the Kong off actually started. I think I was done playing on Tuesday or Wednesday. Right. Um, and so, or maybe it was Thursday. I can't remember, but it was early, but I don't know what I was thinking at the time during this. My goal was to do a hundred hours on armor attack and then try to break the Tron world record. How I thought I was going to play a game like Tron after 100 hours of another game or, you know, even 20, 30 hours. <laughs> so I was, I, was, I was getting my game set up. Now, I didn't know. Did You you showed up with the Kong off two kind of out of the blue. I don't think did, we're. Nobody knew I was coming. Yeah, yeah. So only, you Steve, show up, only Steve Sanders knew I was coming. Yeah. So you show up. With, they're like, Lonnie's here. I'm like, well, who? I didn't know he was coming. So you show up, you start playing joust, right? So you're on your you're on your chair, you get the lunch bucket there, and you're you're playing. And I know you remember this because I, I'll remember it to the day I die. I was setting Tron up, getting Tron all ready, make sure it was working, the camera was set up. And 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 so I had to I had to I was playing it and I had to I had to do something to the game. There was something wrong with the that wasn't plugged in right or something. So I pulled the game out. And you remember how do you remember how close you were? Do you you remember this, right? You were close. You were the, the joust was right next to the Tron, so you were like you were in it, like you were like 20, 30 hours in. What you play? How long did you play I that think night? I played thirty seven hours before I. Okay, so you were probably twenty hours in, because it was the night before you you quit. So I, <laughs> I was pushing that Tron back in, and everything's plugged. The Tron wasn't oh, plugged crazy, in. It's crazy plugged in behind there. Yeah, but that Tron was plugged in on a different plug, but I was still paranoid that I was going to mess your game up. And of course, you mentioned this, and I don't remember you mentioned this because we talked about this years years later, and and, and you're like, what? You, you couldn't have just left the game there. I'm like, well, no, I had to push it back in, right? So I was slowly pushing it back in a little at a time, trying not to mess your concentration up. But I, I think that it was like even worse. If I would have just pushed it in, it would have been pushed in and like, you know, five seconds and been done, but I'm slowly pushing it in, trying not to bother you. And it's taking like 10 minutes to push this game back in. <laughs> and I was so close to you and I'm like, oh my God, he's going to kill me. Right. And you never did say anything that I'll give you credit. Because probably, I'm sure I probably was semi immune to it because it's, it's interesting when I start playing and I get in a groove, it's, I literally can have a complete conversation with people and not remember what I've said to them while I was playing. 
it's it's just it's like a I've had complete interviews, TV interviews and other interviews, and it's just you just sit there and you go. Just, uh, my mind just works differently like that. I just put it in a different place. I don't remember yeah. it bothering me that much other than just, uh, I, I just now that you mentioned, just kind of go, why is this guy messing? Why, is, <laughs> why would you, would you want somebody pulling a machine out while you're <laughs> Exactly. All I could think of was, was um, if I recall correctly, Steve or somebody told me that somebody was playing good one time and they just went over and unplugged the game. You know, it's like, Oh, the, the George, he's playing Cuber. He's like forty hours in or something, or yeah, thirty like, hours in or something. I'm yeah, like, so yeah, that's a great. That's kind of like my favorite story because it was just like so nerve wracking. And then um, I don't know if I have a, a other than that, uh, nothing really crazy. Just like going back and listening, like I know I'm swearing left and right, and I go well, back. My favorite, and I, my favorite John Salter story. My favorite John Salter story. Same place, same place. This is the one I remember. You go. Man, I want to do I want to do what what you're doing with Tron. I want to do I want to go out and tour all these places and do what you did with, you're doing with Jobs. And I, I think I said something to you like, John, you need to follow your own path and be your own be your own set your own set your own uh, path and find out what's going to make you really really the guy. And you're like. I, I seem to recall you saying, I thought it was the most arrogant thing I said. And I was just like, <laughs> it was on I, it was on Facebook. I made that post after I did the 84 hours. And I said, I can't remember what it was, but it was like, because I remember when you said that, I was like, I kind of took it like, I was like, I was like, what a jerk, man. <laughs> but, but, but then after I did the art, and, and, and of course, all this stuff hits you later on in life, you know? Yeah. Then just like you said, like, I remember, and I posted on Facebook, I was like, I remember, I remember, I, you know, it's one of those things that sticks in your head, you always remember. And you said that you like, you know, mate, you got to carve your own path. I can't remember exactly what you said. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? I did it and didn't even realize that I was, I did it. Exactly. You know, because exactly. I, I didn't just jump on armor attack and play for 80, 86, five, four. I don't remember what it is at this point, 84 hours. There was a lot that went into that, you know? So, but, but yeah. that was like, it hit me after I did that, you know? So you well, definitely I, I, nailed it when you said that. And, and I think, too, too many times, John, people try to be a copy of somebody else. When I first started doing the tour, which eventually ended up to be 250 machines, and I, I played one since uh, in, in a decade, you know, it was, it was something that if somebody else did it, did it, it'd just be a copy of somebody, you know, yeah. why not? And I, I was like, people would ask me, why aren't you going for the tournament settings record or marathon record or this record i'm like people have done that like i want to do something yeah. unique i want to do something that, that inspires me and that's in my mindset that's what i was trying to get across to you is do something that inspires you that defines you because nobody's done what i've done i mean i remember in the 80s people would like to have done that <clears throat> of course they'd like to have been paid for it too which that's yeah. another thing there yeah. are people who got paid. Those, those are great stories. Uh, let's see. Okay. So in the 40 years of, of Joust existence, you're one of the best players. What I consider anybody who gets over 99999 a very good player. And I think you're at 20 million or so now. How did you get there? And what does it feel like to be that good? And I know you don't think you're good, but anybody who can get that high has some pretty good skill levels. So... Um, how I got there was, is I, I, I played it. I, I, I want, I wanted to do the darn spawn kill thing right. efficiently. So in order, so by the time I got to the point where I could do that, and of course the first time I did it, it was a complete eggs are flying everywhere and I'm dying. <laughs> and I'm, like, I'm like, that. I was like, this is not quite as easy as Lonnie made it look, <laughs> but, um, just in, in my quest to do that, I, you know, I fell in love with the game. I started learning the pacing and I just played it. I played it and I played it and I refused to watch YouTube videos to learn how to play it, to learn how to play. I, I, I was like, okay, you know, the flying, you always said the flying equals dying, fly less, die less. Yep. That's true. But, but Dan, you got to be able to fly good when you get you those crazy. You got to be able to fly good when you have to. <laughs> yeah. That's the thing. That's you don't make that your strategy, that. With it, but it's, it's, it's a tool in the box. It's not the strategy you use to become really, really good. It's, Hey, I have to kill these guys. Where do I need to be? Yeah, and that's one of the things I'm I'm most proud of now is when I get in those situations, I can get out of them pretty quick. 
you know, um, sometimes you get stuck in the, you know, those forever levels, but, but, but how I got good is I just played it and I played it and I played it. And I'll tell you what, the hardest, in my opinion, the hardest thing of joust getting at that upper level was getting, getting past that 1.6 to two, my, my, I'll, my, I, I will tell anybody, if you can do 2 million, you can do 200 million if you can stay up long enough. Because once you get the two million, that's where the fun. That's where the that's where you get in that flow. And you're all, you know, all so shadow getting, Lawrence. You're into the second hundred waves. Yeah. So getting and, and then you're also getting to where they're where they're flying by the lava troll's hand and they're coming through on the other side. And that's right. when you can start getting in, in that flow. Same, so the hardest thing for me was, most of them. Yeah, getting to two million was like that. Probably was the biggest gap I had of of, of low learning curve. Because once I got to the point to where I couldn't ground kill, um, and not, now you're waiting to get past that point where the lava tro troll can't grab them. That's it. Now I can play through that level without even it doesn't. I I don't even realize I'm playing through that gap, but it's about a three million point gap or three hundred thousand point gap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That three hundred thousand point gap, in my opinion, is the hardest section of the game, and I would just I couldn't I, I couldn't surpass it, you know. And then when I finally did, now of course I don't know what to do past that because the game's a little different. But um, but that's I got good by playing it and I, I over and over and and just getting to that 1.5, 1.6 million and my game would be over and be like so demoralizing. That's the one thing I, I you know I I had marathon. I mean I don't know if I can. I mean I played that 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 20 million point game was like a 11 hour game, 10 and a half hour game, and I hadn't played a long game like that in a while. Now. I don't mean to say it's arrogantly, but when you play games, I played multiple 80 hour games. Like I'm, the, I think I'm the only person that has ever played two 80 hour marathons. They both were armor. Yeah, absolutely. I think even, yeah, and I did those like four, five months apart or something. But so like, I, you know, you want to think like, Oh, 11 hours is a walk in the park, you know, big deal. 11 hours. But I played that, that 10 hour game. I'm like, man, this is a lot rougher than I remember being, you know, but, um, it's just you know, a lot of time to put in, but anyway, I don't want to sidetrack from the question. Is no, that's fine. That's why that's why we're asking the questions. Yeah. So so I just played it. I played a lot, and then when I got to that two million point, when I that that first game, I think I hit two million. I believe I I played to five million. Like when I hit two million, I played another three another three million. Nice, nice. You know, and then the next time I played it, I did, did terrible. But um, and that's it. That was. From, from day one of trying to get good at it to where I felt I was good and I could play past that 2 million was like, I think when I rolled, well, let's go from the day I wanted to get good to the day I rolled it was five years. But it wasn't <laughs> you playing had, you every had a few day. other things to do, right? You had a few other yeah, things. Yeah, exactly. But that's how I just played it. I played it, I played it, and I played it. And, you know, and, and you you just learn techniques as you go. Like I was doing stuff the other day and I was playing. I'm like, I don't really remember learning that. It just kind of <laughs> happened, you know? Um, but you know, and that, that, that's that's. It's interesting that's, uh, if you watch um, if you watch different people who are good at the game, what they do that's a little bit different. Uh, was, when I was talking to Don, I said Don in the middle plays really low. I play high, especially the further you get into the game, and the reason why uh, I mean in the middle, the reason why is the higher you are, the straighter the shadow lords come up. You know, if you're if you're like in the beginning of the game and you're like six wave sixty or something like that, those shadow lords, if you're like here, they will literally come off a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right. The but when you get to like two hundred or something like that, then those those guys are coming almost straight up, almost straight up. And so a lot of times you you will see me. I'll, I'll draw them out like this or there'll be an egg on the bottom that I was hovering on, but I needed to do something else. I'll go over and kill something. I'll go way up and I'll be like up high directly above it. And it'll snap up to me. You know, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so if I knew exactly where I needed to be, where it'll come up, but it won't always do that. You know, when you're low, if you're too low, but you're still getting to come out, they'll escape. And then you'll get what you're talking about, which is those eggs spraying all over the place. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, you just kind of you, in the '80s, it was more like when we started learning how to do that. It was almost like you had to have this, this, you know, you're going like this, going up and coming down, and going up and coming down. And yeah, going, kind of you're bouncing off their heads down. almost, you know. Yeah, so you know you're getting them, and so you're when you're coming up, just a little bit, they come up, and then you're going back down. And 
uh, I preferred as I got good at it to hover at a level where I never had to had to move like that because it took more energy. And so everything about my play is less energy, less movement, more precise, and um, less in that in that fashion, less time. Let's see, uh, anything else you want to cover about Joust? I got two things left for you. So really quick, like I think the the second part of that question, like how was it, how does it feel to be good at the game? Is, oh yeah, right, right. How does it feel to be good? That's right. That's right. It is totally awesome because I tell you, what, <laughs> I put so much time and work into that game, and there were so many gaps. But when I didn't didn't play it, that now I mean when I when I got like now I can consistently get, you know, like you know, like I said to, to me too. I played when I practice, like I play at least minimum minimum two times a week, and nice. I play two million point games because I feel. After two million is where you get in the flow, right. up to two like you're working your way to get to that flow. So I played a two million, then I count how many how many birds I got left, you know, you, I, I, you know. So that, but um, but it's all like when I play it now, it's like it was like oh, like that game. I'm serious. We, I, I never played a game in my life that got me that mad and surprised and have a heart attack from the times <laughs> I was playing that game. If you talk to guys that used to come to the old arcade, the first arcade I had, we would stay after and play. And I would be screaming like, up, like John's playing Joust again. I mean, I would <laughs> that game would get me livid, and I'm it still gets me mad, but I'm getting better at just going with the flow, going with the ups and downs. Of the game. Knowing, but it is, start, knowing you're not going to always be right, might be a little out of position, and trying to get back in positions. I think yeah, but it, 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 it's definitely a great feeling knowing that like I I am at the level I am at now am now because the game there's so much to that game. It's like when you that's the thing that's hard, like hard for me. It's like, like, you know, people are like, oh, you're playing these stupid games. I'm like, you have no clue. And, you know, I think the people that play these games, like there's so many Id idiosyncrasies to the whole game. And just, you're thinking so many moves ahead and there's so much going on. And it's just like, if you stop to think about all that's happening and what you're doing, it's, it's really incredible. And, right. you know, so. Well, and, and the, the thing that I always said, which is flying, flying is dying, fly less, die less. And, and the reason I say this, you get up and there are 10 things that are trying to kill you and they're bouncing off the, they're bouncing off the ledges and off each other. <laughs> and you're trying to project all that in your mind that's, you know, we're, we're not savants. I don't think, I don't think yeah. I, I don't know what the game's going to do. Sometimes I go, well, how did that kill me? So where did yeah, that don't get, from? don't get me started on the bouncing. Yeah, yeah. If you watch the video, you'll hear like I'll go. I, like I don't like I don't want to say it on this interview, but I, but I just I, I, you can hear me mumbling myself. You bouncy mother. <laughs> Here we go. But and of course they bounce. You know the game's programmed to bounce and just kind of magnet. Like you're a little bit of a magnet. No matter. Like they move in an arc, but that arc is skewed towards you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they and, and the interesting thing is you watch it. If it sends one after you, it'll send two after you. And so you might be looking at one and you get killed by the other one that's following it because yeah, you're that's just a little bit out of position. You're like, and so I always look for the second one, not the first one, so I don't get myself killed. And I've had to, because I, I didn't play for like a year after I, I got to 250. And I was like, I would find myself getting killed. I go, well, why am I getting killed again? I go, ah, the second one, the second one. Yeah, so that's all. Yep. So what else, what else do you want to cover in Joust? What's, what's, You've got some some goals in joust what do you what do you want to do so um i do, kind of don't want to get completely into this but i do it's like i, I uh, as far as so the a couple of people were you know kind of busting my balls a little bit of, of that like oh i got the fake record this is j-rock you know fake record john what's the, the fake record? record but i it's like i don't know do i i i, I just feel there's so many like and we, we went over this like a couple weeks when we talked like i just feel like there's so many like what I would say fake or invalid scores and you know but the more I play Joss the more I'm like okay I'm not convinced that all of these are as bad as I thought because I just I just I just I'm not I'm not convinced that when we get in that top 10 those are leg all legit you know and um I'm like do I really want to compete against you know this these scores you know and are they real and it's kind of bums me out like I don't know what is what isn't Right. But my my goal, def, I want to. I'd like to get on the. What, what is what is Twin Galaxy show? The top five. Top top five, top ten, something like that. Yeah, like top five. I'm like to get in the top five is like what seventy million or something. Seventy eighty million probably. Yeah. Now I feel I could do it, but it's gonna be a long game. See, not like and I. 
And the thing about it is, like, to the average person who hasn't, like, played a lot of the marathons, you think, like, man, that's a – the time frame doesn't really scare me. I know I could probably do it. I mean, it's been a while since I played a, a lot of hours. Um, but it does make me – after playing that 11-hour game, it does make me think, like, man, this, I don't know about playing the 30. But I definitely want to do 30 million. I definitely want to get in. I think 30 million would get me in the top 10 on TG on a legit hardware. Nice. And then 30 million would just put me even further ahead of you on that on the J <laughs> route. <laughs> it doesn't hurt no, my, not, it doesn't hurt my feelings that much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm surprised you have I, I am shocked you haven't beaten it already. That was like <laughs> to me and David Cruz talk all the time and you know, and he's all about me beating his Tron record, but he's like, you know, you, you know you're only gonna have it for a couple of days. I'm like, Yeah, I know, but at least I'll have it. Yeah, yeah. Well it's 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 like a few people know that I have a half a dozen records or so that are above the tournament settings records. But all those were done when Twin Galaxies was in that state of flux, you know, where you couldn't really submit anything and know whether oh, you're yeah, yeah. or not. And, I, and so I've got them all actually sitting right here on a, a 10 gigabyte hard drive. The, the challenge would be me going through and figuring out which ones they were. And I was just like, hey, it's okay if Don has that record. Like, uh, you know, I, I'm just going to go after it again. And I'm building back up slowly to it. And, and we were talking the other day, and he wants to push to a 2 million. I go, I, I think 2 million is a good, good record for you to be at because I'll be at 2.8. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing. I, when I was going through looking at it, because I, I look through it probably once every couple of weeks, I go up there just to kind of refresh my memory where everybody's at, because that is the game I'm currently playing is, is Joust. And, and uh, I'm looking at that, and I'm like, I'm looking at your one man record on J Rock, which is what eight hundred thousand? Is that uh, uh, something like that um, on a uh, tournament uh, on normal settings? Uh, Nine hundred thirty-five thousand points on on normal settings. First, don't you have on on, on J Rock one man? So no, I'm it's looking. I'm like, it's not J Rock. It's it's uh, green. Well, you've got a one man. There's a one man track though on J Rock and TG. Yeah, it's probably closer to four or five hundred thousand. Oh no, I think you're right. I think it is four or something. But yeah. I'm think, but I'm doing the math in my head. I'm like, okay, he did four hundred thousand on one man. The what's the one man record? One point. Uh, in green, it's one point seven. I think. So what yeah, that's what Don has. That right. Yeah, so I'm doing the math here, and I'm like, I wonder if he can. And I, I know you told me you did a million on one man before. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if I'm supposed to let that information out. The highest, <laughs> one, I turned in, the highest one I turned in was 935, uh, one man. And then that one also ended up being the, the second highest turn of a setting score, which I turned in, which is one. So you, I mean, you still have 700,000 to do, which like you said, you, the games can end quick. So, yeah. but I, I, I was just like, I was shocked you didn't have the one man. Not saying Don, Don's no slouch, don't get me wrong. No, I have, but, I have, I have the one man record on both. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry, the, the tournament round, the tournament the yeah. record. I couldn't, I, I mean, we really couldn't turn anything yet. And I yeah, just, after I had those, we couldn't turn them in. I just I literally stopped playing tournament settings because I, my goal was to push to three million because I was at 2.8. I had half a dozen over, over two, and ugh, I had a 2.6 and a 2.8. I'm like, dude, I'm like, so on tournament that's, that's yeah so it's stupid. but remember 9.35 you know don will tell you that a million points on one man it's not impossible you you have to be in that group you have to be precise and yeah i'm, I mean, I'm not saying it's impossible i'm just thinking like by the time i get the you people, can't have any stupid losses and uh, a few miraculous saves is not a bad i not a bad thing too <laughs> No, I don't yeah, think that the 935,000 points that I got on the first man was the cleanest 935 points I ever played. I remember a couple scrambles on that to, to, to save that man. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, it's like, uh, boom, boom, down, you know, come around to you and kill him at the bottom. And you're like, uh, okay, I'm breathing now. Yeah. But you, you consider that you haven't seen anything tougher than that I mean, when you're when you're playing ten million points, you've, you've seen plenty of things harder than that. You go into them with the mindset, John, that it's it's I've already seen this before, I've already been through this before. I can do this again, and and that's where my mindset is most of the time. So I can do this again, almost to the point where I find myself a little lax a days ago, and I I sometimes 
I watched playing the other day. I was having this great game, and I, I just failed to flap enough. Failed to flap enough to kill the guy. I mean, just just coming at me, and I just went, you know, just a little yeah. double tap when I should have held it. You know, at the end of the second tap, I'm like, yeah, doom, and four guys gone. You know, you're like, I said, Mr. L I call myself Mr. Lazy Flap when I do that. Okay, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's so self-deprecating. I don't yell at myself or anything, but I, I can get a little bit, a little bit. Mommy, you're such a stupid person when you flap like that, you know. Well, it's that's the worst when you miss a flap and it leads to some crazy scenario where you're like, like just one flap, I'm one flap, <laughs> one flap, one flap, and you've lost four guys, and you're like, yep. Uh, yes, yeah, so it's, so only, it's only like a pixel and a half. No, that's all I need. <laughs> oh, I, I just I need to add just a little more. I, I know what I wanted to ask you um, and, and and get your opinion on it. So you know Mark Hoff? Yeah. So I was talking to Mark, and this is back when I was first getting good, and I started getting in that million range, you know, because Mark Mark's a Jaws guy. Yes, and we, we were talking back and forth on Facebook, and he was mentioning like he's like when you kill the when you kill the um, you know when you go for the other guys, you want to hit him with your butt, right? And I was and I was watching one of your videos a couple nights ago, um, and you were talking that you like to do it the regular, like just the standard kill. You know, you don't you don't purposely always go for the but he was telling me there was a pixel thing like yeah the, the back leg is longer so you yeah are, so you have like a right pixel advantage leg. on the butt kill yeah the back leg is longer but you know here the if you're turned around backwards you're basically saying i'm facing backwards and he's coming down at me like this and i'm like going, okay well wouldn't it make more sense if you had more space on the back side than the front side at least that's where my mind is on that and I'm like going, okay, so um, I, I understand what they're saying and why they're saying it, but my mind's not letting me say that that's the best way to play yet. You know, unless you're, oh, yeah. unless you're missing them on the front side and you want that extra leg, I'm like, it's like, it's lower than the top of you. So is how is it helping you when the guy comes up? I, I haven't seen, I, I don't know why that is. If you feel more comfortable playing with your, you know, getting stuck in the butt with the lance, I'm, I'm absolutely yeah. fine with that. <laughs> why, I, I don't know, like, <laughs> like my opinion on it is, I don't even know. Mark said, do it. So I was like, okay, so I started doing it. And now that's just how I play. <laughs> no, it's a, and a lot of people play that way. A lot of people play that way. And, and, and I've played that way. Sometimes I'll get in a groove where I just, I feel more comfortable doing it backwards because I have to go the other direction, you know, and, and I, you probably watch me, I tell them from both direct, both directions, and it just depends on where I'm at. But a lot of people, they just, they get stuck on, I have to kill them this way. I'm like, I'm oh, no, I mean, yeah, you gotta do, you gotta do what you gotta do, but like, I'm gonna kill them however I can. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Little blue bastards. Yes, <laughs> yeah, so I, I definitely want to do, I, I, my, my, my goal, end goal, I guess, is to put up some score that people are like, oh, damn, John's better at than I thought he was. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think they already think that. I, I, was, yeah, I was very proud to see you go over 10 million and go to 20. And I knew, I knew you were developing those skills. And um, I feel I like I had honor to call, I, I feel an honor to call, call you a contemporary. And uh, I don't know that I'll ever get to 80 or 100 hours uh, playing Joust. Um, but uh, your your armor attack that's just that's just a whole nother level of commitment so i have um one more question for you would you like to give a shout out to john and the development team because we're going to show this to those guys john, yeah definitely you know I, like, yeah, I, yeah. I don't know if you knew this or not but john actually had the the, the um, idea for joust before he went to work for williams so i've been percolating ah nice stuff yeah, no, so I would definitely say, you know, thanks for making such an awesome game. I, you know, I apologize for not appreciating it the way I should have <laughs> in 1982. But, but Total I'm lack of respect. <laughs> <laughs> I'm keeping the dream alive here in, in 2022. But no, that's awesome. And I, I, I don't go out, I don't go like leave the house area. I don't want to make it sound like I'm like, I don't go out and leave the state of Ohio that often because I, um, with the arcade and work and everything, I couldn't do anything for like five years. So right. now that I have the opportunity that I have the extra time and I, you know, and fortunately with my job and the kids finally kind of moving out, I have some extra money to do that. And like my number one thing I was going to do is I'm going to this joust 
party in Texas. It's all good. My wife didn't care, whatever, didn't care what it cost. And then it just so happens that it fell on the same weekend as my daughter's uh, that's still in the house, uh, her graduation party. So I couldn't come out. So it was a bit devastating. So I think I told you I was coming. Right, right. And I was like, oh, by the way, I'm not coming. So it does kind of suck. But um, I appreciate the fact that, you know, that, that you guys made that game um, and that you're still supporting people that are playing it. That to me is even more important than putting the game out that, you know, you're still around and supporting everybody else that's playing it. And it's about fun. I mean, right. you wouldn't know that watching me play the game and screaming <laughs> at the thing, but at the end of the day, it's about fun. But you other, know, people we have, having, other people are having, other people having fun watching you uh, create a train wreck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we have to, you know, we have this goofy thing where for some reason we want to play these games for multiple hours and get these crazy scores. But at the end, I mean, this is what it's all about to me. Like, you know, I mean, we talk other than this interview and um, you know, all the friends I made, you included, and, and, you know, everybody that, I mean, I know so many people around, you know, the United States and even out of the United States that I did not know that I didn't have this exactly. kind of family of video game friends I never knew existed. Right. And it's because of, you know, you know, guys like John Newcomer and everybody else who made these games that were still, I mean, the friendships are still being made around these games. And to me, that's right. what it's all about. Like David Cruz, I met David because I was going for the world record. I called him. To let him know I was going to go for it because some of these guys go a little get mad. Oh, and yeah. me and him were like, he's one of my my best friends. I mean, even yeah. out of the game, and he lives in Florida. And you know, we, you know, I, I mean, he's coming out to Ohio for a show. I can't wait, you know, to yeah. get together. And and it's because of the games, because yeah. of you know these guys that made these games, and we still I think congregate around them. I think it's so cool. Um, at, at my age, sixty one, I am so much more and have been for the last decade about teaching people how to play the game. Or any game, how to be better at any game, and it's, it's, and especially when you know it's picked for the U.S. national video game team, and then in the Hall of Fame, and I'm like, well, I think the champions like you or like me or and other people like David Cruz and other people, it should be our job to to encourage people, to show people, uh, to pass that pass that knowledge on. I was thinking about somebody the other day when I was, I was out to his house uh, playing the game. And I taught his daughter how to, to tear the control panel apart and to, to fix things. Like, <laughs> because this is perfect passing on just to the next generation. And like, <laughs> and to see that the younger people wanting to learn how to play it, and it, it, it does my heart good to make people better. You know, uh, Tracy in the UK you know, has 10 million points many, many times now. And she started with nothing. You know, and watching videos or giving encouragement. Uh, there are a few people just saying, you know, you're you're like you need to move like five pixels to the right. That's why you're yeah. that's why you're dying. You know, and it's I think that's you know as an armor tech professional almost I would say yeah. almost an armor tech professional uh, or joust guru or whatever it is, giving people some help is to me it's just it's just cool to to be able to do that. So. Oh, definitely. I agree. So uh, one other thing I wanted to mention too, about like one of the things I'm proud of is getting better at Joust is uh, I was going to, this is one of the things I'd written down. I didn't bring my notes with me. I was going to talk about, but like the fact, okay, I, I did the 20 million, right? And I, that was awesome. And then I had like a hundred and some lives left over. And I'm like, Ooh, nice. it's on now. Nice. I'm going to get a higher score. But to me, and, and I'm doing with this, with the Tron as well, is I did that on a, on a Joust machine that I refurbished from a beater joust cabinet that had been converted who knows how many times yeah. the hours sanding bondoing painting art everything and I, I i i brought that machine back from the dead and i did that score on that machine but I, so as, that, I re, as i recall let's make this even your 20 million even more important the tensioners the oh yeah with no tensioners with no tensioners so you were you had a lot less control than you really should have had to get 20 million points and so i was that made me even prouder of you because i've like been in that position where they wouldn't snap back to where they're supposed to snap back to and you're having to hold it in place and you know sweating bullets to get scores and and it's having that piece there if you don't many of them broke off or at least one side's broke off and it made oh. the game, and so that's one of the many reasons I carry them with me, or I carry. Uh, at one point, I refurbished somebody's complete control panel because they didn't have the right sticks or the right contacts, and 
know, having the right stuff there to play the game appropriately makes a big, a big difference for somebody who is good. The cool thing when I was playing is I try only to play with what they had, just to clean it up, tighten it up, gap it, and play it, unless unless the switches were, you know, like you only have one part of the switch, you know, <laughs> and then you, have yeah. to, you have to fix it a little bit more than that because you can't just go left or fly backwards when you're trying to fly forwards. So just really, really, really proud of you. And we need to do something joust related together soon, man. We should do it. Definitely. I'm, I'm down. We'll do it. We'll do it. All right, man. I'm going to, I'm going to be uh, done. Appreciate you being there. And we're going to show this to the guys for the 40th anniversary. It'll be on my channel under uh, uh, joust interviews. And um, I think we'll probably put the link up on the joust master uh, website too, joustmaster.com. Would, so we'll would you there. like, would you like a copy of the interview I did with you, Richie? Oh my play? gosh, that would be amazing. Send it to oh, me. Oh yeah, I still have. I've got, I've got so many interviews with so many people from back then, but yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll get that. Um, how, how, That'd be good. How, this, uh, that was, here you go. That was, that was December 3rd. That must've been December 31st. It was, it was New Year's Eve. Yep. It was a New, New Year's, Year's Eve party. New Year's, New Year's Eve. And it was like joust number 24 which put me or something like that. I, I just remember it was an interesting number because I, uh, how long I played and it was at the end of the year. So I, I was calculating a number in my head. So yeah, I remember that. Cool. Yeah, yeah send I, it I, off to me. That'll be good. We'll put it up on the interviews too. 12 years ago or 11 or 12 oh, years yeah, ago. Believe that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's 11 <laughs> years ago now. Yeah. That's crazy, crazy. man. That's crazy. All right. So All right. I appreciate it. So, uh, thanks a lot. I appreciate you, you, you can let me be a part of it since I couldn't make it out. I'm still bummed I can't make it out. So yeah, well, we'll we'll see you soon. Thanks, man. Have a good day. You too. Bye.